call the meeting to order. So we'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional land of the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, which is represented by the communities of Saugeen First Nation and the Chippewas and Nawash Unceded First Nation. We also thank the Métis Nation of Ontario, whose history and people are well represented in Bruce and Gray Counties. And now for the reflection of October 15, 2019. So I really hope that everyone had a wonderful and relaxing Thanksgiving. I thought we would begin tonight's meeting by giving thanks. In Blue Water District School Board, we are fortunate to have such amazing staff, whether they work directly in the classroom, as an administrator, custodian, or in another capacity, each and every one of them plays a vital role in contributing to the excellence for all our students. We give thanks to our parents, guardians, and families whose support and partnership are fundamental to student success and well-being. There are also many partners, organizations, volunteers, and community members who give to our schools in a variety of meaningful ways that are too many to list. For a moment of reflection, please join me in sharing our gratitude for those who contribute to a strong public education system that enriches the lives of the Blue Water students and families we serve in Bruce and Gray Counties. Before we begin tonight, it's, it's a really happy occasion. We have um, a, a new student senator, Hannah Knight, who's going to do her declaration, and she is from Georgian Bay Community School. So Hannah, would you like to, yeah, stand up. You always do it better when you're standing up. And just speak into the mic, and you know what, we'll be cheering you on here. Go ahead. Excellent, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. There. Now I'm going to do the approval of the agenda. that the agenda for the meeting of October 15, 2019 be approved as printed. Can I have a mover? Thank you, Trustee Atkinson, second, Trustee Morgan. And I just want to include that we have received regrets for tonight's meeting from Trustee Thompson. So that will be included in there. So all in favor and opposed and carried. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest um, of for with with any of the agenda items before you tonight? Okay, I see none. So now we're gonna move to minutes. So that the minutes of the regular meeting of the board of September 17, 2019 be approved as printed. Can I have a mover for that please? Thank you, Trustee McComb, second. Trustee um, Lutz, all in favor and opposed and carried. 
next i'm looking for the the approval of the minutes of committee of the whole board meeting of october first two thousand and nineteen be approved as printed can i have a move for that please thank you trustee loose seconded by trustee morgan and i didn't ask this before but did you notice any errors okay all in favor and opposed and carried is there any business arising from either of those minutes? Okay, I see none. And then we're on to excellence in education. I'm gonna put the motion on the floor. That the Blue Water District School Board received the Professional Activity Day September 2019 report. For information, can I have a mover for that, please? Trustee Boy John and seconded by Trustee Dawson. And welcome Superintendent Hamilton. Thank you, Chair Johnson. On September 27th, we invited uh, the teachers and the principals and members of the uh, professional student services uh, personnel group uh, to come to Owen Sound and we had uh, a, our professional development day. The focus was on mental health. We had two amazing speakers who uh, came and uh, were very well received by uh, all who heard them. Um, we had. Uh, Dr. Robin Hanley Defoe and Dr. David Posen. Lauren Penner Lipset, our Learning Services Administrator, did the lion's share of the work in terms of organizing the day. And so she's going to come and tell us a little bit about what they shared with us and about the, how the day went. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me tonight. Nice to see you all. Um, as Paul said, we had a really fantastic day uh, on Friday, September 27th with our two speakers, and I'm going to share just a couple highlights from the day with you. So one of our speakers was Dr. David Posen. Um, David Posen has written several books, you may, which are displayed on the screen. You may or may not have seen these. His latest book is the um, Yellow One, Authenticity. It, act, it was just published within the past year. And so David is a well-known speaker, author, and practicing physician, but he focuses a lot of his work around managing stress. And so David talked to uh, staff that day about um, stress management, and he had three main uh, sort of ideas which are on the screen there but he did a great job of being practical adding some humor into what he was saying but giving sort of um, advice for how to manage stress both in the workplace and at home to benefit to benefit everyone so he did talk with staff about uh, your perspective at work and how to really um, have an optimistic perspective how to frame your thinking so that you can you know be the best you can be in your day and do the best work that you can do and how to face challenges when you uh, are uh, come across them and then again he just gave some some practical tips for managing stress one of the interesting ones he really focused a lot on sleep of course there's a lot of research around getting good sleep and getting um, sleep that is uh, consistent every night so that you go to bed at the same time and you wake up at the same time and that's optimal. He also focused on caffeine. So the audience had a little trouble with this one because he really was challenging us to try to give up caffeine for just a short period of time and see if we, if we could feel the benefits. And so he got a few moans and groans from people. Uh, we obviously had some coffee uh, lovers in the audience. <laughs> but he really, he really was just talking about how to have an act, um, active, healthy lifestyle. That is one of the best ways to support stress reduction. Our second speaker then was Dr. Robert, Han uh, uh, sorry, I'm not, Dr. Robin Hanley Defoe. And Dr. Hanley Defoe uh, actually works at Trent University. She is um, a teacher there. She does work directly with students. She also does research, and she also is a speaker that travels around um, and gives talks. We have had uh, her to Blue Water uh, previously, and her message is really about resiliency and how to build and foster resiliency. 
So you can see in the picture here, that's actually a tweet she sent out on the day of uh, the PA day. And that is a standing ovation she received at the end of her uh, talk at the uh, Eastridge OSCVI Auditorium. And um, yeah, I'll tell you a little more. Her, her message was very moving. And so um, at the end of the day, staff stood for her and gave her a loud round of applause. So she sent a really nice tweet mentioning Blue Water and she was very appreciative of the opportunity to come and speak here with all of us. And so she identified for us five characteristics um, that when you, when you look at the research that resilient, uh, that people that uh, display resiliency have in common. And these are the five characteristics on the screen. And so she did spend part of her talk just uh, telling us a little bit about each one and how you develop those in yourself and how you can support developing uh, those characteristics in others. And then she talked a lot about um, the idea of life-work balance. She did, on purpose, put the word life first and then work. She flipped it from work-life, as we sometimes hear, to life-work. And um, these were kind of her top 10 tips. And she, she had little stories and anecdotes to share as she went through these. She also added humor. She had um, you know, practical stories and um, examples to share with us. But one of the most moving um, stories she shared with us is what's on this slide uh, here. So when Dr. Defoe was a teenager, she was in a terrible car accident where her vehicle uh, plummeted into the water. And she shared the experience of how she escaped. And she um, herself fought her way out of a sunken car, swam to the surface, uh, was met with ice, swam a little further and broke through and then was actually seen and rescued by the gentleman in, that, in the news clipping here um, who happened to be driving along, saw tracks going off the road and saw sort of someone laying. And um, obviously she survived <laughs> and thrived. And so then she spent a lot of her work thinking about how was she able to do that, which led her to be looking at resiliency. And she credits her mom with teaching her that she could always do hard things. And that was sort of her mantra, and that was what her mom instilled in her. And so she just um, tackled that situation and said, I can do hard things, and she did. And the week after uh, the PA day, the following week at school, the picture on the bottom left <laughs> that says, I can do hard things, that's in now in one of our kindergarten classrooms. So one of the teachers picked up on that message and had it up the next week. Um, and was talking about resiliency with her young students. So all in all, it was a really powerful day. We had a lot of positive feedback from staff just saying they, could, they walked away taking with them some information they could use both in their work life and in their personal life, and that they just really appreciated that, um, we, that the, they were given the opportunity to spend a day really thinking and reflecting about their own health and wellness and then how they could support health and wellness in our students. So it was a great day. Any questions? Ms. Trustee, do you have any questions or comments? Go ahead, Trustee Lee. Thank you. I just want to say it sounds like a fantastic day. I'm so glad so many of our staff got to hear these wonderful speakers and I look forward to seeing how these uh, messages infiltrate or move through our education system, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I look forward to seeing the spin-offs of such a wonderful day. Thank you for sharing with us. Any other comments? None. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And yes. it's always Thank you good for your to time. know exactly what happens on PBA, PA days and, yes. and for trustees to know that. So sometimes we, we get asked questions and then we can meaningfully reply. It was quite educational and, and, and not only educational to staff, but very beneficial to students as we just saw. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to put the motion back on the floor that the Blue Water District School Board receive uh, the Professional Activity Day September 2019 report for information. It was moved by uh, Trustee Boyd John 
and seconded by Trustee Dawson. All in favor and opposed and carried. Thank you. We're now under uh, reports. So I'm going to do the first ones and I'm going to, pardon? Yes, there's no delegation. But that was kind of obvious. And what I mean by that, there was nobody else in the audience that we were, you know, that did not normally belong here. So I'm going to um, put the motions on myself and then I'll be looking for somebody to second those motions. So this is that the Blue Water District School Board approved the Bruce Peninsula District School Fall Hike 2019 trip from October 16th to the 18th, 2019. Um, can I have, I'm moving it and I'm looking for somebody to second it. So I think uh, Trustee McComb, all in favor and opposed and carried. Next, uh, moved by Trustee Johnstone that the Blue Water District School Board approve that Georgian Bay Community School students participate in the Kolapur winter trip February 11 to, th to the 14th, 2020, and the Algonquin winter trip March 3rd to 6, 2020. Can I have somebody to second that? Trustee Morgan. And I should have gotten this before, but any uh, suggestions or conversation or discussion concerning this trip? I see none. All in favor and opposed, and that's carried too. That the Blue Water District School Board approve that Owen Sound District Secondary School students participate in the Europe 2020 Dublin, Ontario, uh, Dublin, London, <laughs> and Paris trip from March 12th to March 21st, 2020. Can I have a seconder for that? Trustee McComb, is there any discussion? I see none, all in favor, opposed, and carried. That the Blue Water District School Board approve that Saugeen District Senior School students Participate in the VE Day 75 Amsterdam and Germany trip from May 2nd to May 10th, 2020. Can I have a second? Thank you very much, Trustee Lutz. Any discussion, questions, comments? I see none. All in favor and opposed, and that's carried too. Thank you. Next, we're going to move on to the business uh, committee of the whole report. Pardon? Oh, okay. So that's what it looks like. Okay, sorry, we're not moving on. That the Blue Water District School Board A approved BP 6820-D, safe and accepting schools as revised for system use, and B, rescind BP 6821-D, Bullying Prevention and Intervention and VP 6825-D, Progressive Discipline Students, upon board approval of the revised VP 6820-D, as the necessary information from those policy policies is now sufficiently covered by VP 6820-D. And it's moved by Trustee Johnson, seconded by Trustee Dawson. Is there any discussion concerning all those VPs? Go ahead, Trustee Dawson. Thank you, Jerry Johnson. I just wanted to say you did an excellent job of reading all those numbers. Thank you. And thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? I see none. All in favor and opposed and carried. And thank you. Now we move on. So what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to ask the chair, which is Trustee Morgan, if I'd um, like to give a little report, and then when we get to exactly that motion, then we can put it on the floor. Oh, no, I'm going to put it on the floor first. That the Blue Water District School Board receive the report of the Business Committee of the Whole Board meeting held on October 1st, 2019. Can I have a mover? Trustee Morgan, second. Trustee uh, Boyd John, go ahead, Trustee Morgan. Thank you, Chair Johnstone. Um, meeting was on October the 1st. And uh, first of all, we had items for information. We received the preliminary enrollment report 
as of September the 12th. And then we got uh, the report on our school renewal projects, uh, part two, because part one was too long. And um, so we saw pictures of work has, that have been done across the board. Uh, we got the Georgia Bay Community School update for the new build. Also an update on Beaver Crest in Markdale. And we also received a report on the Rural and Northern Education Funding, um, which was uh, extremely interesting. Um, l lots of really good stuff there, uh, particularly the um, money for innovation and stuff like that, quite, quite good stuff. And then we received the report on the Capital Priorities Program. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions or comments um, for um, the chair of the business committee? Okay, I see none. All in favor and opposed? Carried. Right, okay. So this has to do with the report of the Committee of the Whole in camera uh, meeting that was today. So it's moved by uh, Jay Johnstone and seconded by, thank you, uh, Trustee Dawson, that the agenda of the October 15, 2019 Committee of the Whole Board in camera meeting be deemed to meet the legislative requirements for discussion in camera. Can I have a mover for that? I mean, I mean not move, but can I, all in favor? and opposed and carried. Thank you. So this is moved by uh, Trustee Johnstone and seconded by, and it has to do with the received administration placement update. So Trustee Morgan, that Blue Water District School Board received the administrative placement update report for information. All in favor and opposed and carried. And so also that we're going to be doing a media release regarding the administrative placement and it will be distributed the morning of October 16, 2019. I just wanna also say that we performed an annual performance review of the Director of Education and has been completed as per board policy. And that is the report from the Committee of the Whole in private. Is there any notices of motion coming forward this evening? Okay, I see none. We are not establishing any committee committees or appointments at this time. And then I'm looking for the student senate report. Welcome student trustee Shigano. Uh, good evening. So um, now that we're back into the swing of things, uh, school across the board are very busy. Uh, as several schools had their um, commencements on Friday, additionally, many of our schools took part in World Mental Health Day by planning events such as wearing green shirts to raise awareness. Um, furthermore, uh, schools are preparing for Treaty Week by planning events and assemblies. Um, additionally, many participated in Orange Shirt Day uh, this past week to show their support for reconciliation. Um, schools also participated in elementary cross, uh, cross country meets last week with some of our secondary students um, helping with the events. Uh, secondary students are attending university presentations in preparation for post-secondary. Um, at SDSS, the girls and boys uh, elementary soccer teams took place in a tournament, the girls coming in third and the boys coming uh, in, in first. Um, additionally, SDSS is preparing for Treaty Week by organizing an assembly and planning a school-wide painting led by an indigenous graduate. Uh, at PSDS, we are planning a Halloween dance and uh, are having student elections this week. Um, we are also preparing for cross country skiing, uh, the cross country skiing season. Um, BPDS uh, students return from their camping trip to Killarney um, and are busy at work playing fundraisers such as bottle drives and haunted houses for upcoming events. Um, Gray Highlands uh, participated in the BAA tennis tournament and are planning on having their first uh, football pep rally this week. Um, GHSS also arranged a field trip for students who are new to the area uh, to acquaint them with their new surroundings. Uh, and show them all the local hotspots. 
WDCS just wrapped up their locker decorating contest are, and are beginning to prepare for, uh, to prepare for cross country. KDSSS um, held two coin drives, one for Midui and one for a local charity. Uh, they also started um, intramural dodgeball last Friday, and JDSS is organizing their plans for climate action in their green committee and are becoming comfortable in their new school. Um, OSTSS is busy at work planning events this month and recently beat SDSS in rugby 31 to 20. Uh, with all of our schools hard at work, the Senate has also been busy uh, as we had a planning meeting two weeks ago to finalize our initiatives and prepare for this academic year. We have decided our vision statement for the year being advocacy, equity, and action, which will be the focus of our initiatives. We are looking into equal representation uh, within the Senate and modernization of Treaty Week. Additionally, we are looking into environmental sustainability initiatives, such as organizing climate assemblies within our schools and um, developing composting systems within all of our secondary schools. Additionally, we are curating a survey to send out to uh, the Blue Water student body to assess their needs and create a strategic plan for the year and um, pull in, uh, additional initiatives from that. Uh, we are also planning presentations um, on the Senate for secondary schools uh, to receive to ensure that students are aware of this opportunity. Uh, lastly, we have developed a survey to send to WDCS to assess the effectiveness of the free menstrual products they've been providing their female population with to see if it is something worthwhile pursuing at a board level. Thank you, and I'm able to take any questions now. Thank you, that was great. So, is there any questions or comments? Director Murray. Thank you, Chair John Stone. Not to put you on the spot, Student Trustee Shigano, but maybe you could just in a couple of minutes talk about the meeting that you were at this morning for the board. The Indigenous Education Advisory? Yeah, um, yeah so I attended the um, Indigenous Education Advisory Committee uh, meeting this morning um, and got to sort of see what, what the board is doing in terms of um, um, Indigenous education. Um, and it was really, really uh, informational for me. Um, a lot of stuff that I took out of it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to attend uh, the meeting in fe February? February 14th, yeah. So, it's a really great opportunity. Go ahead, Trustee Johnson. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Uh, you commented on Gray Hannon's secondary school activity for new students. Um, going around looking at the hot spots in the village. Um, I think that's a tremendous idea, actually. I'd heard about it earlier, and I would like to fully support it. Um, my question is, um, how did this come about within the student body? I don't know if you have the answer for that, but where did the impetus for that come from? I am not on to... Oh, she's not here, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not on to the center on that. I don't have Maybe what could happen in the next time is that we could we could know because I think it would be of interest to um, to the trustee, trustees and that would be great. So I'm really glad that you said, hey, listen, I'll get back to you. Any further questions, comments? I see none. Thank you very much. Great report. Okay, so now we <coughs> excuse me. We're going to do staff reports, and I'm going to put the motion on the floor that the Blue Water District School Board receive the implications of increased class size regulation for student programs and staffing allocations in Blue Water District School Board secondary schools report for information. Can I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Atkinson, and second, Trustee Lutz, and welcome Superintendent Wild. So I'm sure all of us in the room are aware of the um, government's new education plan. And one of those, they are moving in the next four years from um, 28 to one, 28 students to one teacher, to a ratio of 20, um, 22 to, to one to 28 to one. So with that comes some planning for all the boards because um, that is quite an increase. And you will see uh, from the, the report, we're not able to replace any retiring teachers. We had 20 teachers retire this year, but the government has provided attrition funding and also the acronym STEM funding, which is science, uh, technology, um, engineering, and math uh, funding to help support us get from this four-year period to help uh, 
kind of get us over the leg and help get us to the 28 to 1. In the middle of the report, it talks about the staffing process. And I just want to point out for that, you can look at the report, but I want to point out that there is flexibility in that report in terms of um, we provide staffing best based on student um, requests and the number of students that are coming to that school. But then after that time, we have what's uh, hold back, which we're allowed to do with a collective agreement. And we then can provide enhancement sections based on some needs that are identified at the school level. So for example, I know in some schools they didn't have a qualified French teacher to offer some of the French programming. So they would come, the principals would put forward the request for enhancement staffing and we would grant that um, based on uh, lack of qualifications they might have, staffing qualifications they might have at the school and based on programming that they need for students to graduate. So that middle section really is just talking about some of the flexibility we do have with some hold back and ensuring that we do meet the collective agreement processes that are outlined in terms of how much we can hold back and at what time of the year we can do that. With the movement from 22 to 28 to one, there will be implications uh, both for students and uh, as well our staffing levels and classroom loading. So those are the three sections there. For, so our student programs, with the flexibility that we have, we did have principals come forward and we did distribute additional sections to ensure that most of our needs were met in our school schools. And you can see some of the courses that we've outlined where we did provide enhancement sections. Uh, hospitality and tourism, environmental studies, computer programming, law, construction, and automotive technology. A lot of those are elective courses. One's not deemed to be versus a compulsory, which is our math, English, etc. So. We are, on the good news, we are at this point in time above the projections that we had for secondary enrollment. So we have projected by October 31st that we would have 4,311 students. At last count, we are 98 students above that projection. So that's very, very positive news for us because uh, with that projection, the government will, by the count date, if we maintain being above our projections, we should receive some more funding, which can support us too. Um, in terms of the student programs there in that section A, if you have school specific questions that you want to know about programs that may um, not have been offered at the school in your area and or ones that maybe were being offered through enhancement uh, sections, please talk to your area superintendent. They do have the specifics with that information available to you if you have questions. So implications for staffing levels. So this is interesting. So in Blue Water, we have 55.5 full-time equivalent positions that will have to be eliminated over the next four years to meet our 28 to one ratio. So I already mentioned about the attrition funding that's going to protect some of that, but when you have retirements, there isn't, project, um, there isn't the funding available. We, with 20 retirements out of the 55.1 positions, that's a lot to endure in that first year. So we are seeing that we have got a lot of increased class sizes, um, but again, that also goes back to our, uh, our number of students are above our projections as well. So that is good news for us that we are in that position. Um, we have received, uh, and this was uh, starting the 20, the, re the retirements were as August uh, 31st, 2019. So this is year one of how this process is working. The other one, we, um, there was concern about classroom loading. I don't know if any of you have received maybe some calls from parents on that one, but we have, um, we've had had a good ruling from the Ontario Fires Marshal's office on that one. And so um, we can, in our classrooms, we can have 1.85 square meters per person is required. So that includes our staff and our students. And we have looked at the majority of our classrooms. So on average, our classrooms are large enough to accommodate 36 people in that room. So that's good news for us because most of our classes are within that range. And if not, we have had some of our, um, they, they, if there's an issue, they can move to a different room if, to accommodate that. And in fact, some of our classrooms, so that would be for about 36 students, that would be about 730 square meters. And I know plant department um, did some, and uh, with the support of Superintendent Cummings, they did some investigation and uh, on average, some of our rooms range from, and this is including our old, older schools and our brand new builds. 
they range from 750 up to one, a science lab, 1,075 square, square feet. So we're in good position, um, or square meters, to adhere to the classroom loading as well. So it's the next three years will be interesting, and I say that even because in terms of the uh, central negotiations that it will be occurring with our OSSTF secondary teachers, this may change this current plan with the government. We're not sure yet, but I would suspect that this is something that the uh, that OSSTF will be going into the central negotiations asking that it not be a 28 to 1 ratio. They'll say that's too high, and they'll be wanting to negotiate um, a lower class size. So that remains to be seen. So if that's the case, then this would look a little bit different for us here in Blue Water District School Board. So again, if you have any specific school questions, your area superintendent, um, but there's a report on our implications around the changes with the government. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, questions or comments uh, for, for the superintendent? Thank you very much for the report. It was something that we, we had requested and I, I am going to thank you on behalf of the trustees for suggesting if you have specific questions concerning your areas to go to, to that area superintendent and that just makes a lot of sense. So thank you. Thank you very much. That the Blue Water District School Board receive the implications of increased class size regulation for student programs and staffing allocations in Blue Water District School Board Secondary Schools report for information. It was moved by Trustee Atkinson and uh, seconded by Trustee Lutz. All in favor and opposed and carried. Next under communication, so I did receive an email, which eventually we're gonna have a conversation about, but it was from the town of Blue Mountain. It was uh, concerning um, the, the ability in terms of planning and um, maybe a new, a new school, but at least uh, because they wanna look at plan, you know, like their own planning for the town. And, and so towns, when they do planning, they're, they're looking at it, are we looking at needing to have space for say a new school? So anyway, um, it was a motion that was passed, um, I believe on September 30th. So I'm, I'm just letting you know, we received it and then there'll be a, a conversation as a board and, and, and in response. And go ahead, Trustee Morgan. <coughs> just to clarify this um, and to be upfront and outspoken about this, um, the uh, vice, chair of the board and one of the counselors approached me um, before that motion was taken to their council meeting um, and asked if um, they thought that I, whether I felt that it was a good idea that they approach us. And I said I thought that um, anything that we could do working together and going forward was was probably a good idea and that they should approach the board in writing. Thank you. And it is. It's always uh, great. We have to look at our municipal partners. We we um, all serve the same um, people and communities. So they have as much interest as us in um, our student success, and which is their student success. So thank you very much for encouraging um, them to basically share with us the motion and then we can move forward from there. Um, so that's under communication and then is there any other like student trustee announcements, um, staff ministry of education, and then there's also that ops up there. Do you have any? Go ahead. Um, Lucas and I will be heading over to Toronto on Thursday for the fall general meeting with Asta Eco and we'll be returning on Sunday. Excellent. I also know that uh, the regional meeting is coming up and I, and I know it should be in the calendar. Is it in the calendar event? I've never even looked at that. But anyway, you would have received um, a request um, from, um, I think, TJ about this and, and it's um, in going to be, I know it's in, in London and uh, you can go down the night before and they have 
some events planned the, day, the, the night before, and then it, it starts on Saturday, and of course you can just come on Saturday. Provides an opportunity to um, meet with uh, uh, trustees from across the region, but also this is a joint meeting between our region and the central western region, and where we're gonna be doing some educational you know, uh, development for trustees and doing um, some modules. So it is an opportunity to, um, you know, um, get education about the role of the school trustee. Anything else? Okay. So we're at, um, okay, and I mentioned that, the whole conference. Okay, so is there, and you mentioned yours. Is there anything from directors? Nope. And, and so we talked about it other out of uh, district meetings. So finally we make it to the calendar events. We pursue that, it's always interesting. Uh, as we move through the school year of um, education, the, it's always much bigger and then it starts to shrink down. So finally in June, it's only like a few things. And if there is an event that you believe should be on here, please let us know and we can make sure it's, it's been um, included in our calendar of events. Okay, this is an important motion now. That the Blue Water District School Board adjourn at 7.43. Can I have a mover? Thank you, Trustee Lutz. Second, Trustee uh, Boyd John, all in favor and opposed and carried, and that's a record. <laughs>